Hey everyone, welcome to the Roto Grinders Morning Grind Podcast. I'm your host, Stevie TPFL. It's Friday, it's March 29th. It is 2024. We have an eight game MLB slate, day two of the baseball season. Joined today by my good buddy, Will Priester, Chief Justice 06. Chief, what's happening, my friend? Nothing much, man. I'm excited to come on. We have transitioned, Stevie. To a little MLB, and I, I'm so grateful to be a part of this thing yet again. Uh, as I always say, MLB is definitely uh, my favorite DFS sport of all time. Uh, and um, even in the prop game, love the props. So I, I'm, I'm excited. Had had a Steve, I've had a really good opening day um, to start this thing off, especially in the prop streets. Um, all, almost got close to a takedown on draft picks. Close. Uh, hopefully tomorrow we can let that materialize, but, uh, just, just, just really glad to be on with you, man. Talking about the great game of baseball. Yeah, I was close. Um, I had a a lot of really good teams for opening day, just a fantastic day in general, um, betting DFS wise. It was a good day for me. Uh, if you listen to the podcast yesterday, we were on a lot of the stuff that went right today. Um, we were on Washington. They suck. Um, that's going to happen. You're going to have duds from time to time. But all I got to say is, dude, my boy Crochet showed up and just brought the gas, man. Um, he looks healthy. You know, this is a guy that was a top prospect at one time, and he looks healthy. I'm excited to see what he does throughout the season. Um, my boy Burns on FanDuel. He was on my best team that I had over on FanDuel. I talked about how on FanDuel you could get different with – playing some burns and then, you know, potentially playing some Baltimore bats and it was different. And burns had a a really, really strong game. So, and the Baltimore bats had a really good day. Um, Dodgers had a good day. Burns had 11 strikeouts, uh, just wild. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Martini, we talked about how he was hot in spring training. Well, (laughs) he was hot today. Um, he, he, it, it was so funny. I was watching the game and they're like, Oh, he had his second home run at it's 501. It's officially happy hour. Um, so they were <laughs> they were they were jumping in with us on that. Oh, so, what listen, uh, what a call, uh, right? What I know, call. right? Oh, right at what a call. Uh, just absolutely um fantastic <laughs> in that aspect. So hope everyone had I hope everyone had a great opening day. Um I, I think for the most part it was a good day, and um hopefully everyone over there on YouTube had a good one and we're back we're ready to talk some more baseball we got eight games uh we got a night slate you know this game this slate kicks off at 6 50 eastern with eight mm-hmm. games and um yeah we'll see what roth has to say as far as tomorrow um for the weather if we have any potential weather on the slate i don't mess with weather i let roth do his thing and just follow what he says i mean that's what i do so yeah. uh what's up youtube Hope you're having a great Thursday night. Let's get started here. We get Toronto at Tampa Bay. Seven and a half total in this game. Tampa, a slight favorite here at minus 130. Chris Bassett, Bassett against Aaron Savali. Um, any interest here in Chris Bassett? No. Yeah, I will say really quick um, before we get like into breaking down these games, this is like one of the most drastic um, drop offs I've seen from opening day pitchers oh, to yeah. day two pitchers. Um, a lot of really bad pitchers on this slate. Um, so might have more interest in guys that I wouldn't typically have a lot. I might honestly just kind of go overweight on guys that I, I think are really good. Um Bassett, I think Bassett's okay. Um, he threw 73 pitches in his last spring start. That's solid. Um, he should throw 85 plus pitches here if he's pitching well. Bassett's really good against righties, um, limits the damage against righties. Diaz or Rosarino, um, parodies like all these guys out, outside of like Lau, um, and a couple guys towards the bottom of the order. So, very right handed heavy team. I think Bassett could be okay. You got to throw pricing out the window because pricing is just really messed up on the slate for pitching. Um, so I think you throw pricing out a little bit because we wouldn't want to pay this price for him typically. But yeah, I think Bassett's a guy that could go out and score 15 to 20. So I think today I am okay with it. Um, Savali on the other side here, any interest in him in this spot? 
No. Yeah. Kind of with you on this one. He really struggled with home runs in spring training. And again, this is a, a ballpark that is going to help with that somewhat, but this is a good lineup top to bottom. They don't strike out very much. Um, and this is not a spot that I, I really want to play a lot of Savali. So Vlad uh, opening day home run too. How about that? Thank you, Vlad. Lee, more yeah, of that. Yeah, shit. Um, yeah. I need him to hit like seven or eight in the first like 15 games so I can sell some rookie cards. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Come on, Vlad. Help, uh, us, help us out here. Yeah. So uh, what are your thoughts here on the Toronto Bats? I'm interested in the Toronto Bats today. I want to make Savale prove to me that he can limit the damage, Stevie. You talked about, you know, some of the things we saw in spring training. And I know everybody isn't as probably as in the spring training as I am, but I do try to follow it just to give me a little bit of insight, Stevie, in, as to where they could be. Now, uh, I'm going to say this and then I'll move on. But like a guy like Pablo Lopez, I wasn't worried. Pablo didn't have like the best spring training in the world, but he talked about the fact that he was experimenting, trying to figure out some, a new pitch, so forth and so on. But we know we know what Pablo is, and we saw what he was able to do today. A guy like Savale, no. Uh, he's getting attacked right out of the gate, already struggling in spring training. Toronto comes out, puts puts up a few runs today. Um, and definitely I think Barrios is a better pitcher than Savale straight up. I, I like uh, the Toronto Bats today. Uh, big time yeah i'm with you on the the toronto bats i I think this is a good spot for them i think we have a lot of good offenses today um this is one of those days where like my main builds might be like three three twos um because i think we have a lot of good stuff like a lot of good spots today um just in general so um yeah so i mean as far as the toronto bats go I mean, I'm really not going to say no to any of them. Uh, Varsho is someone that I'm very interested in here to start the season. Like I talked about on the podcast yesterday, his stolen bases were really high in spring training. He was running a lot. So I like that. I mean, Springer, Bichette, Vlad, Turner at the top, obviously all very much in play. Um, Toronto's on my list for stacking today. What are your thoughts here on the Tampa bets? Yeah, Tampa... I will say I think they're just okay. I just don't like the upside of Bassett as much, um, which is why I'm not as interested. Uh, he, you know, he did start picking up a few strikeouts down the stretch in spring training, but I still don't think his. Well, we know historically he hasn't been a high K guy anyway, uh, and I do think the Toronto Bats, especially the top, they got some guys that could give him some problems. Uh, we already know that Yandy Diaz, while he's not a huge power guy. Not going to strike out a ton. So, so Bass is going to have to pitch around him. Um, Brent, we're getting Brandon Lowe here at 3,800, or Brandon Lau at 3,800, Stevie, much cheaper than I think what, where we will see him later on in the season. So I think now is the time to uh, get some exposure to him at, at these particular prices. Uh, Paredes at, at, at 4,400, I'm okay with because he's another guy that's not going to strike out a ton. Of course, you go to the outfield, you've got uh, Rosarita. Ramirez is another guy that strike out a whole bunch. So they just got some guys that, that I like. Um, I'm not planning to stack this team majorly, but I don't mind one offs. And I think Brandon Lau um, is going to end up being fair. I don't want to say fairly high owned, but he might be an ultimate one off play for a lot of people in cash for sure at 3,800. Yeah. I mean, you know, Bassett's biggest issue is left handed power. We talk about it all year last year. His barrel rate was very, very high against lefties. So, I mean, Brandon Lau very much in play for me here. Um, Richie Palacios. I'm going to say, I'm gonna, I have to look up this guy's name. I, I haven't Palacios. done it yet. I think it's Palacios. Palacios. There you go. Um, I haven't looked it up yet. And I did not watch the race today. They are local. So like when I'm watching MLB TV and I'm flipping through games on there, I'd have to watch the Rays on my actual TV above my computer. And I was watching the Marlins. I'm not going to lie. I was very interested in the Marlins. Um, was very interested in Mitch Keller failing, which he did. Like I said, he was going to. Um, so there you go. But yeah, those are the two that I really like here for Tampa. If you're making a stack out of it, a Rosarina, um, Paradis, Diaz, always the guys that I would pair here. Um, Pinto had some pop last season against right-handed pitching, but I mean, I'm not going on my way to play him. Uh, Pittsburgh at Miami. There we go. Uh, eight total in this game. Miami is a 136 favorite. We have Martin Perez back in our lives again, not going away, doesn't want to retire. Um, going up against AJ Puck, 
for Miami here. We're going to go Perez first. We know what we're getting out of Martin Perez. We know what we're getting. We're getting ground balls. We're getting, you know, a guy that's going to generate ground balls and try to generate soft contact. Uh, any interest in Perez here? Nah, not really. Not 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 today. Um, I, I do think there will be some spots, Stevie, where we're able to where, where we are able to use him. I just don't think today is that day, despite a weird pitching slate. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any interest in Perez. Uh, it's just good ballpark. Don't get me wrong, good ballpark. Um, just not a high upside guy. And then AJ Puck on the other side of this game, he had huge strikeout stuff in Monster spring this year. Spring training. Monster. But the thing is, what what my my biggest concern here with him is they really don't know what they want to do with him yet, as far as if he's going to be a reliever or a starter. He's not stretched out. He didn't throw a ton um, in spring training as far as like pitch count wise. Again, pitch count what pitch counts in spring training is still tough because you know if you go and you have like three to five really solid innings and you get out of the game, you sometimes go to the bullpen and throw another, you know, simulated inning or two or three. So pitch count wise is always tough in spring training. Um he threw five innings in his last spring training start. So, I mean, that's something to go off of. It just wasn't a lot of pitches. Um, so what are your thoughts here at 7K going up against Pittsburgh? I just saw um, Jesus Lazardo mow this team down today. I think, I think Jesus Lazardo had eight strikeouts in five innings, around 85 pitches. I think that's what he had somewhere around there today, Stevie. And I think Puck at 7K – I think it's reasonable enough. Like I got a chance to see a couple of his starts in spring training. So I saw him and what he was able to do to a handful of teams. I, I think the strikeout stuff is real. I'm with you. I don't think he goes past four innings for what it's worth. Five max if his pitch count is low. If he can get to five, Stevie, he might legitimately have eight strikeouts in this game or more. Um, and, and that's a little maybe that's a little bit ambitious. But I, I think the strikeout stuff is real. How deep is he going to go? I don't know, but I'm, I'm willing to take the risk at 7K today, Stevie, because I don't think I don't know if he'll get the ownership that we anticipate. So I'm, I'm going to take him today for strikeout upside in hopes that he's fairly efficient. Yeah. So, like I said, he. Through five and a third against Houston in his final spring start. He had eight strikeouts in that game. Um, I, I don't know, man. The strikeout stuff is there. Pittsburgh is not typically a team that strikes out very much against left-handed pitching. But like you said, I watched Lazardo throw. Um, he pitched really well. He he threw a BP fastball that Brian Reynolds just smashed, by the way. Um, I, I said it in Discord. I was like, oh, that was a that was a bullpen or um batting practice fastball. Uh, but anyway, yeah. I I have interest a little like I have slight interest in Puck and I have slight interest in the Pittsburgh bats. It's one of those scenarios where it's full on DFS baseball for me. Um so looking at the Pittsburgh bats side of this, Reynolds, Hayes, Joe, McCutcheon, all very much in play for me here. Yeah, I get it for sure. Um, I'm not as interested in Pittsburgh today because I think I, I think they're just not going to make the cut for me with some of the other teams that I like. I won't stack them, but I will one off them if that makes any sense. So I, I won't have full stacks, but I'm with you. Like you know, bringing in McCutcheon, you know, bringing in a Reynolds, you know, bringing in a O'Neill Cruz. Who Stevie, you know, we thought our O'Neill Cruz over 0.5 hits. Uh, prop was dead, and then what did he do? He hits another. Uh, I think he hit another home run today, Stevie. Cruz has been on fire, uh, so you know, was super pumped uh, about that. Um, you know, Cabrian Hayes, another guy that I think you know you, you could get in there. So, once again, I, I don't mind one off of this team at all, uh, but I'm def I definitely don't think I want to stack him too much today. Got some other targets I like more. Yeah, I just, I mean, I would assume. For Pittsburgh, we see a very similar lineup that we saw on opening day. They're facing another lefty in this spot. So, I I mean, Connor Joe at 3K, of course, now he's first base only. Um, but 3K for him is in – he's in play. 
Um, I don't like him as much now that you have to play him at first base. Um, Hayes is fine for power upside. You know, McCutcheon has, throughout his his long career, always hit left-handed pitching really well. On the Miami side, uh, one of my favorite hitters on this entire slate, like not even just for this game, one of my favorite hitters on this entire slate today is Jake Berger. He's a fly ball hitter. He smashes left-handed pitching. I really, really like Jake Berger in this spot here going up against um, Martin Perez. Yeah, love that call, Stevie. Um, I'm with you. I actually like the Miami Marlins team. And I, I know Perez historically doesn't get blown up, so, like, I, I get it. But I, I I just think this – I think they're too cheap for what the upside could be. See, I think that's where I'm at with my – I just think the team overall is too cheap. Like, you got Josh Bell at 30, 3,900. You know, I know Araya is lefty-lefty, 45, but he's just a guy that's not going to strike out until you talk about Berger already, who I love. Tim Anderson, Steve, he, even though he was batting in the, in the, the seventh spot today, 3,900. Uh, you know, Sanchez 31, De La Cruz 30, Abigail Garcia 20. I just think they're too cheap. Um, so I, I like Miami as a secondary stack in there a lot. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I fully stack them because, like you said, Martin Perez, not a guy that typically gets blown up. So I like Berger a lot. Um, if De La Cruz hits third again, I'm interested in him. If Fortes catches again, He's really cheap as a catcher, um, so I have some interest in in him here as well. Um, yeah, in the green is all you want. YouTube chat, yeah. We, we want to be in the green. We like being in the green. You could be in the green more than you're in the red. You're good, right? Um, or in the – yeah. All right, you got Yankees at Astros. Nine total in this game. Houston a 122 favorite. We got Carlos Radon against Christian Javier. I mean, two names that we definitely know, uh, two names that definitely could be pitching here at the start of the season. Um, Radon here first. I mean, honestly, looking at some of his AAA stuff, the velocity was really solid. Um, and that's one thing that I'm always worried about. Carlos Radon is like his velocity. But I mean, the dude gets one of the worst matchups in baseball. Like you just don't want to be a lefty facing the Houston Astros. It's just not a spot. I feel like we're going to target a lot this year. Uh, do you have any interest here in Radon? Oh, over hit yes. over half of mute. We got uh, it. Oh man. Terrible. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what I was saying was in terms of Rodon, I watched him in spring training. Stevie looked much improved from last year's meltdowns. I think I think he's going to be serviceable this year. Not in this spot, but yeah. but we're good getting for him. him. Just not today. <laughs> yeah, uh, but Stevie, we're getting him at seventy six hundred, which hopefully he doesn't come out and smash, and then we get him at this price or better in a better spot. Um, so that that's kind of my hope for Rodona. He just doesn't get absolutely destroyed. But I can't play him today at seventy six hundred versus uh, versus Houston. Man, no way. And Derek says ultimate mute. Yeah, Derek, that was for sure an ultimate mute this time. <laughs> yeah. You were going, you were going too. Um, you, you were, yeah. you're like I'm, I'm going for it. Uh, <laughs> loving it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, I I like the talent prospects of. Radon and I always have. I'm not playing a lefty against Houston this year. No. Like I, I won't play any lefty. I won't play Cy Young lefties against Houston this year. I just don't think there's enough ceiling on a nightly basis. Um, a whole Texas with the home run. Jankowski ties it up in the bottom of the ninth. Baseball man, gotta love it. It's back. All right, going to the other side here. Christian Javier, uh, 8,300 going up against the Yankees. Any interest here in Javier? Uh, I think Javier. I think Javier is gonna be necessary today, Steve. Like he's he's the guy that can. He's at home. He's the guy that I think I'm with you. This is my 15 to 20 points guy. Right. With upside, maybe for a little bit more if he's pitching well. Um, I don't. I'm not thrilled about the matchup with the Yankees, but I do think there are some strikeouts there. I think if he's able to limit the damage enough early, he could be looking at a really quality, really nice outing. So. Javier is definitely going in the pool today. 
Uh, talking while muted is better than talking while you don't know your mic is on. Um, hey, there you go. Um, my my problem with Javier here, first of all, is he's a fly ball guy against a, a lineup with a ton of power. I know. My other my other issue is like adding adding Verdugo and Juan Soto to this lineup lowers the overall strikeout upside of this lineup. You know, you get two guys that don't strike out a lot. Verdugo was 15% last season. Juan Soto was 16 and a half. Um, for the small sample size that we saw from like Oswaldo Cabrera towards the bottom of this half of the lineup, he doesn't strike out a ton. So like the guys you're trying to get strikeouts on are like Judge, Stanton, Rizzo, Volpe. Judge and Stanton can each hit like two home runs off of you too. So it's and, the night before. Be the strikeouts. Yeah, it's the it's the <laughs> night before for me on Christian Javier. It's all going to be a, when what his ownership looks like. If he's getting some steam here because like he's not remotely expensive, okay, um, easy fade for me. If he's not getting any love today, sure, I could play some. I like Bassett a little bit more than I like Javier, just because I think Bassett has a better matchup against the lineup with Tampa's lineup and. Javier has a really tough matchup here. Um, so I, I get it. it. It's just like the overall addition of Juan Soto, it, it was a huge gap in this lineup that they had. They needed that lefty bat to get the job done, and they have that guy now. And, I, I mean, overall, I think a, a guy like Rizzo could be better this year. He fought a lot of injuries last year. So we'll see. But yeah, I mean, Christian Javier, I'm lukewarm on him here. Uh, Yankees bats, anything that you like here for the Yankees? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you talked about it. I don't mind a one off of Rizzo. Uh, I, I don't mind a one off of Stoto, Judge, you know, Stanton. I, I don't mind one off in these teams. I don't even mind a one off of Glaver Torres, who had a really good season last year. Uh, I I just don't want to stack the Yankees. Yeah, I don't know if I necessarily want to stack the Yankees, but I don't think it's the worst stack spot in the world. Um, fly ball pitcher, a lot of power in this lineup. Juan Soto's a ground ball hitter, so anytime we get a ground ball hitter against a fly ball pitcher, it definitely creates more line drives, which I love Juan Soto in this spot. Javier is worse against lefties as well, so Juan Soto I think is a top hitter on this slate. I really like Verdugo. Um, I hope they kind of tuck him in the bottom half of this lineup again, because uh, if they do end up doing that, I think his ownership could stay down a little bit. We kind of saw that with Martini. Martini was cheap, but Benson was cheap too, and we saw Martini be the guy that like didn't have a ton of ownership because he was eighth, um, and people don't like hitting people at the bottom of the order, which I get to some est- extent. Uh, Houston bats against Radon. Uh, any interest here in the Houston bats? Yeah, definitely have some interest here. They're, they're a little expensive, Stevie. And, and you know what? Let me go out on a limb and say a lot expensive in certain spots. Um, so I just don't think people are going to be gravitating to Houston the way they should. So give me Altuve. Give me Bregman. You know, give me Jerry Pena. You know, I don't, I don't hate Chad McCormick. These guys do bond. You know, I'm, I'm in on this team, along with the lefties, Tucker and Alvarez. Um, so I, I want to stack this team. Um I'll probably use them the way I use Detroit today. Like Detroit was a team I did stack on the previous slate, but I had them around 10 to 15%. And I think that's what I'm going to do with Houston today. But maybe they'll be the 12 to 15% range in terms of full stacks. Uh, but I, I do really like Houston. Yawning. Um, sorry yeah. if you guys heard that. I don't know if you heard that or not. But um, yeah, for me on the Houston side, very interested in them again. I, w- I was high on them yesterday on the podcast. Um, played them quite a bit diaz mccormick bregman altuve um ended up with some pina he is just a guy that makes a lot of contact against left-handed pitching so as much um hard contact is radon likes to give up you know this is a guy that i definitely want to attack here um so yeah all these guys in play moving on we go from like these like three like semi early games to like we got some late baseball um here on a Friday night so yeah, we're gonna really be late like half the slate is after nine o'clock today yeah so we're gonna be sweating some baseball um tomorrow night 
We got Rockies at Arizona taking on the Diamondbacks. Nine total in this game. Cal Quantrill back in our lives. Merrill Kelly pitching for Arizona here. Uh, any interest in Cal Quantrill here? Nope, 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 nope. No, a fast no is definitely warranted here. Um, we don't have to get into the stats too much, but he is another guy that really struggled with home runs in spring and just not overall um, a good pitcher. He is going to be a guy we target a ton in cores this year. Oh, I know your your rule about cores, but man, when we get to cores with Kyle Quantrill on the mound, you might have to break your rule a little bit here, Will, because going to be a going to be a fun season to pick on him. As yeah. much hard contact as he gives up. Uh, Merrill Kelly on the other side here. Uh, any interest in Kelly in this one? Yeah, I definitely have some interest in Kelly. Uh, I think the last start I saw him have for spring training, if I'm not mistaken, he might have had eight strikeouts or something like that. The last one I saw. Um, I can't remember what. I don't know if he had another one after that. But bottom line is, you know, I, I looked at the previous year's stats for this team, Stevie. Uh, while they did have some injuries, with Brian and Blackman last season. Overall, their lineup still struck out a ton. I'm not saying they carry all of that into this season, but we, you know, and I think Gallon's pitching right now as we're recording. So I, I do want to see kind of how Gallon does here, uh, if he's able to get through with, with strikeouts and efficiency. Merrill Kelly is definitely not as efficient as Gallon gen- in a general sense, but he does have strikeout upside. And so at 9,400, He's one of the top pitchers on the slate. Um, you know, we're going to have to spin up to get him, uh, and I do like him a ton against the Rockies. Yeah, so I think Kelly's a top pitcher on the slate too, you know, and it feels bad to say that, but, I mean, this Rockies lineup, against right the pitching, uh, their lineup that they started against Gallon, just because I know this because I played Gallon and I was working on some stuff for him, but they had a 26.7% strikeout rate against right the pitching. Um last season the the lineup that they rolled out there so yeah i think Cal- kelly is a top end pitcher on this slate and um i think he's going to be popular for good reason yeah let's talk about the leverage here though as far as like the rockies bats are concerned if you're if you're playing a lot of kelly i would definitely suggest if, if to get at least one head stack here of the rockies i mean this is one of the better ballparks that we have on the slate hitting conditions this is definitely one of the better places to that, to target on the slate. Nolan Jones has power. McMahon has power. Rogers has power. We don't know what to expect from Chris Bryan as far as injuries. We don't know what to expect from Blackman, but there is definitely a stack to be had here if you're playing a lot of Kelly and you want to get some leverage or just head your, head your lineup a little bit. Yeah, I get it. I just, I don't like this team enough to, to stack them or play them today. Against Will's Kelly. like, if they stink, they stink, and I'm moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get it. Um, San Diego State stunk, that's for sure. Um, Woo! UConn, UConn just kind of gradually ran away with, with that thing, man. Yeah, it was interesting. I have bets on Illinois and um, North Carolina, so I'm interested to see where they're at. But those are my two college basketball bets. Uh, Arizona, I think Arizona is one of the top, if not the top team on the slate to target on this one. Obviously, we got Zach Thompson facing the Dodgers, and we're going to talk about that spot as well. But I absolutely love the Diamondbacks here. I think this is a great spot to attack um, Cal Quantrill. He was already giving up a ton of home runs in spring. This guy is just not good. Corbin Carroll, a top hitter on the entire slate today. Um, Marte, was he had a fantastic spring training. Uh, what do you like here for the Arizona Diamondbacks? Yeah, man, Stevie, love the Diamondbacks. Um, and I'm hoping, I am hoping, Stevie, that Corbin Carroll can continue to just be good, right? Like, don't, just don't fall off. Just keep playing well. Um, and if so, um, I, I think, I think we're going to, I think we're going to be rolling here. So I, I do like this spot for him, or for this team, rather. Uh, you know, you got Moreno at 3,600, Stevie. So he's he's kind of on cheap catcher alert, if you will. But we do have some expensive pieces like Marte's 52. You've got Carroll at 58. Uh, you've even got Christian Walker at 51. So these guys are priced up, Stevie. But they also brought over Eugenio Suarez at 4K. High strikeouts, but high possibility of a home run uh, for a guy like him as well. So I, I, I do like this spot for this team in general. Um, and I, I, I'm more, I'm definitely going to be having some Arizona exposure. 
sorry, I was uh, scheduling my Jock Jams tweet for tomorrow night. Um, <laughs> my bad. Um, really like Jock Peterson. He should start here. He's going to yeah. – him and um, – oh, what's the dude's name that started – Oh, Alexander. So Alexander and Jock Peterson should kind of rotate DH. Um, Jock should draw the start here, and I would assume he hits like fifth Four, or sixth. Yeah, fourth, fifth, yeah. yes. Yeah, Somewhere. so I, I like Peterson a lot. Um, they brought him in for his power. Uh, so anybody that doesn't know me, I'm a huge Jock Peterson fan. And I uh, really like this spot for a guy like Alec Thomas. Uh, so I'm going to definitely get exposure to the bottom half of this lineup too, because you get some value, you get some lefties towards the bottom. It's going to make um, stacking a little bit easier as well. So yeah, I like Arizona a lot. I think it's a great spot to attack the Diamondbacks. All right, we got Boston, my Red Sox. Facing off against uh, Seattle here, seven total in this game, one of the lower totals that we have on the slate. Uh, Seattle's a 166 favorite. Nick Pavetta going up against George Kirby. Any interest here in Nick Pavetta? I'm, I, I, this is my own defense play, Stevie. I mean, gosh, I feel like he's either going to score 18 to 20 or 8 to 10. I, I don't <laughs> I don't, and I don't know which version we're going to get here. Um, I'm just not sure on him. I think I get some exposure in tournaments only. How much I don't know, but he's definitely not not in my single entry. I got to be running probably at least at least twenty lineups before I get to him. I will say, like Pavetta's biggest thing that he struggles with is home runs. This is a good ballpark for that. Um, you know, so you get him outside of Fenway, and he he has strikeout upside. Like he's always had strikeout upside. So on a slate that we're definitely a little limited for pitching and upside just in general, I'll probably roll out some Nick Pavetta. Like he's not going to be like a main lineup type of guy for me today, but I, I think the strikeout upside is what I'm willing to roll the dice here on Pavetta. Yeah, and he got he, stretched out really well in spring. So yeah, I, I think Pavetta could throw ninety pitches in this spot. So uh, I don't know if we could say the same for the other side of this game. George Kirby did not get stretched out very much in spring. Um, he did not throw a lot. He was awful in his three spring training starts. Um, as much as I like George Kirby, I'm a little concerned with how bad he was. Uh, his command was awful in spring training. Do you have any interest here? No, I can't play him today at 9,700, Steve. I think he's a bit too expensive for where I think he's going to go. And, you know, I'm with you. Like, when guys don't go deep in spring training, even if he had a simulated start, Stevie, I still don't think he's quite there. Uh, for me to pay this price for him, even though, you know, I mean, I think even though it's only eight games, I'd even be getting at least 85 pitches at this price. So I, I, and I don't know if he gets there, Stevie. He might be at on, he might get to 80. Today, maybe he gets to eighty five, but I, I still, I still don't like him uh, at this price. So I, I'm not playing George Kirby today. Yeah, I, I mean, listen. At the end of the day, we're going to be picking on the Red Sox a lot this year. The lineup overall is not great, um, and I say that as a Red Sox fan. We're young, and we have a lot of strikeouts with guys that are very impatient at the plate. So. Yeah. If Kirby clicks today, he could have a really good start. So, like, if you're playing 150, you're probably getting some exposure to Kirby. Um, but if you're playing, like, a single entry or three-entry max, I don't think that is the type of contest I'll play George Kirby today. Yeah. And then as far as the Red Sox bats, I, I mean, I could get behind, like, a little three-man stack here with, like, Devers, um, Cassis, Duran... I don't know how much I want to play story. I really like Trevor story against lefties, Yoshida. So attacking some of these lefties here against Kirby, um, Kirby did give up a lot of hard contact, but it would be more of like, Hey, this guy really struggled in spring and maybe he's just not right yet. And I can take advantage of it with some low on Boston bats, but that that's all I would use them for here. Yeah. Steven, actually that's what I'm doing uh, in some of these spots. Uh, that that was one of the reasons I, uh, I I played some Miami today. Like you know, uh, Ke Keller didn't have the greatest spring training. I said, "Well, these guys that didn't look great, let let me just 
roll a couple of lineups out there and see what happens. I'm going to do something similar here with Boston against Kirby for sure. Yeah, you should have listened to my podcast yesterday, Will. Um, I went into detail about why Mitch Keller was awful in spring. Um, and it, it paid out because he – was throwing in 90 to 92 range again here um, against Miami. His velocity is down a lot right now. So anyway, um, let's talk bats for Seattle. Pavetta does give up home runs. Um, what are your thoughts here on Pavetta? Or the bats against Pavetta, sorry. Yeah, I knew yeah, your okay. mic was muted. I was just, you know. Yeah, yeah, I got you for sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, I'm okay with Seattle. I feel like this is my mini stack team today, Stevie, for what it's worth. Like this is this is where I kind of get my mini, and I think I'm going power and home run hunting. So this is where I plug in a J Rod. I possibly, you know, pair that with a Mitch Hanniger, you know, or Polanco. Like this, you know, this is where I want to be with this team. Or Cal Raleigh. I think that's how I approach it. So I don't think I go more than three deep on this team. Probably going to be doing two men's. Uh, actually, but that that's what I want to do with Seattle. Get some little small small mini stacks going, and uh, use them to my advantage against a guy that that could give up could give up a little bit of hard contact. Yeah, I like the Cal Riley call. Um, you know where where Pavetta struggles is left handed power, and Cal Riley um, kind of mid range price catcher. So I, I don't mind that call at all. And then if you're looking for like a cheap bat here, you can go to uh, Canzone. He should hit like sixth or seventh in this lineup. And again, where you want to attack Pavetta is left-handed um, bats with some power. So, I mean, yeah, I think you play Julio Rodriguez against anybody, really. Polanco, I think, is in a good spot as well. San Francisco at San Diego, seven and a half total in this game. San Diego, minus 152 favorite. Uh, Kyle Harrison going up against Joe Musgrove. Joe Musgrove involved in that opening series, so he's already got a start under his belt, and uh, it wasn't good. Let's go uh, Harrison here first. Any interest here in Kyle Harrison? My, my mouse is not cooperating like usual, Steve. I don't know why. I can usually you know, slide and get to my unmute here, but it's not cooperating. I, I think I'm okay with Kyle Harrison. I, I don't, you know... He's either going to have a really nice outing or probably get blown up, Stevie. Um, I don't think he ends up in the middle, but I'm willing to take the risk. I don't think I play him in single entry. I don't think I play him in three entry max. From running 150, I think I get some exposure to him. At 7,800, he does have some upside. I don't like the spot against the, the Padres for what it's worth, but at 7,800, I'm willing to roll the dice a little bit. Yeah, one of the biggest prospects in baseball, um, Harrison, really kind of expected to take that next step this season uh, just overall tough spot um the padres are just a team that they're they're pesky they're gonna put the ball in play a lot they're not gonna strike out a lot so harrison isn't like this like over overly demanding um type of pitcher too he uses cutters um he has good strikeout stuff um it's just i i worry about the matchup i do like kyle harrison as a player and i'm going to roster him this year in certain spots I don't think this is one of them. I think this is a tough spot. Like you said, if you're getting into the 150 range build, well, sure. Why not? I mean, look at the slate that we have for pitching. It's awful. Uh, Musgrove here making a second start. Uh, again, his first start was awful. It was bad. Um, any interest here in Musgrove? Zero. Stevie, this is my spring training pick on pitcher. Musgrove hasn't been good in any start pretty much all season. Um, I and when I say all season, I'm saying spring training leading up into the season. So I don't want to confuse anyone. He's my Aaron Nola from last season. Aaron Nola was started out so rough last season, Stephen. He's a guy that started and I picked on early in the prop game, took unders for strikeouts, you know, or excuse me, unders for pitching outs, so forth and so on, fantasy points. And I'm doing the same thing with Musgrove. He, he hasn't looked good all spring training. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's a mechanics issue. I don't know if he's tipping his pitches. But something is not right. And uh, I'll, I'll dig into him a little bit more in Baseball Savant and just see, you know, what, what nuggets I can uncover. But uh, I'm not playing Musgrove, and I will be targeting him today big time 
with the San Francisco Bats. I'm with you. Um, I, we talked about this the other day um, about after his start. So, yeah, I, I don't have any interest in Musgrove. I don't know how much I necessarily want to play Giants bats just because, I mean, I don't know how good the Giants bats are. I, I liked them a little bit yesterday, uh, just in general on opening day. And I could see using Yaz. I hate that you got to do Wade at first base. Solaire definitely stands out to me in this spot. Musgrove's a reverse splits pitcher. Like Solaire has big power in this spot. So I like him. Maybe play a little Chapman. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts overall here on the Giants bats? Yeah, man, that, that's what I'm talking about, Stevie. And the other thing, too, is we don't really have anyone that we have to play over 5K. So we're getting Solaire at 47. Uh, if Conforto and Yaz make the lineup, which I think they should, I mean, they're 37 and 3,600, Stevie. Then we're getting Chapman at 39. I, I really like this spot uh, for, for the Giants. This is another one. Now, they're not a primary stack for me. Another uh, secondary stack. But these prices, Steve, are going to open up. But we don't really need too much as much salary relief today as maybe we did yesterday on a previous slate. But I still think being able to get a stack in this type of spot against a guy that I think is going to bring a lot more name value than production early on in the season, sign me up. I, I love this spot for the Giants. Yeah, and we should note that Steven Vote only pinch hit one player today. Um, new, new, uh, new coaching over there in San Francisco. I will say, like, we didn't talk about him a lot yesterday. Um, Jung Ho Lee is like a KBR KBO superstar. I mean, this is oh, a yeah. guy that oh, yes. he makes a ton of contact. So absolutely. And he came over in the spring and just right where he left off in KBO just came over and was hitting. So um, Jung Ho Lee is another guy. Uh, again, we didn't mention him a lot yesterday, but I, I don't mind this here. San Diego bats. I mean, they definitely need to be on your list today just because of it's a young pitcher that really just hasn't taken that step. We kind of all expect him to take that step. But I mean, you got right-handed power with Bogarts, Tatis, Machado, Kim, a lot of power here. So, like, this is a stack that could easily go bonkers on this slate. Yeah, they got Haseon Kim, another guy, Stevie, that came over from the KBO. Uh, and I follow KBO for those of you that don't know. So, a lot of these KBO guys, I, I'm always thrilled to see them come over. Uh, I'm hoping one day An Wu Jin, who was a pitcher for the Kai Room Heroes, I'm hoping one day he can get over to the MLB and let's see what he's really made of, Stevie. He's the guy that had incredible strikeout stuff uh, until he until he got got injured last year. So I'm hoping uh, we can we can get him rolling. But at any rate, uh, I, I love San Diego. San Diego was a team I stacked on a previous slate, Stevie. And while I didn't get as much production as I wanted to out of the stacks, they were still able to score the runs. I think they scored seven runs, and I mean that's what I'm looking for. So you know, you're giving me a team. You talked about the power. Uh, the power will be there. Stevie, I had some Merrill, Jackson Merrill, at the bottom of the order, batting nine. He came through. Really nice day for him for 3K. So I, I, I like this team. I think they got a really good balance. They have some expensive pieces up top, but they've also got these cheaper guys like Merrill, like uh, Camposano, uh, catcher. Like so, so you can put together some really nice teams, uh, and you don't have to break the bank on every single player. Love this team. All right, cruising right along here. We got two games left. We have Cleveland at Oakland. Seven and a half total in this game. Cleveland, a minus 148 favorite. We got Logan Allen going up against Ross Tripling. Uh, let's go to Logan Allen first. Any interest here in Allen? Yeah, I, I don't mind Allen. He's just meh. You know what I mean? Like, not anything crazy. But at 7,400, I don't mind playing him against Oakland today. I uh, think he could pick up some strikeouts. I don't think he makes it six innings, Stevie, for what it's worth. But I, I think he could be serviceable here for 7,400. So I, I'm in. Yeah, I want to see what the lineup's going to be like just overall for Oakland because they do have um, – oh, my boy Devers just hit a bomb. Um, they do have, like – a lot of right-handed batters that they can platoon, oh. but Diaz is hurt. Um, 
another person's hurt too. I can't think of. They have another right-handed batter that's hurt, and I can't think of his name right now. But um, so I want to see what the lineup looks like for Allen. If he gets kind of like a pushover lineup, I don't mind him here. Uh, but they do have some right-handed bats that I mean, JD Davis, um, Brent Roker can hit left-handed pitching really well. So I want to see what the lineup looks like before I make a final decision on Allen. Um, stripling. So I I make notes as I'm doing research, Will. And my Mm -hmm. notes for Ross Stripling is did not miss bats in spring training. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Just straight up. That that is what I wrote down. I said did not miss bats in spring training. Um, Needless to say, I don't want to play Ross Stripling today. No, me either. I haven't played Ross Stripling since he was a member of the L.A. Dodgers three years ago, I think it is now. Three to four years ago. That's the last time I've played Ross Stripling. All right, let's talk about the bats here for Cleveland. I'm going to start with my punt catcher of the day, Will. David Fry is my punt catcher of the day. He's 2,100. I really like David Fry today. Um, he, he's a guy you always worry about strikeouts, but Ross Stripling is not missing bats. Um, I think David Fry has some upside in this spot. Obviously, I like Jose Ramirez and Josh Naylor. Not a full stack for me. I do think this is more of a mini stack just because of the ballpark. But Cleveland uh, definitely in play for me today. Yeah, absolutely. You talked about Jose Ramirez at 5,500. Sign me up. Um, you know, I, I don't hate Naylor. Uh, Josh Naylor, that is, at, at first base at 4,600. You know, another guy that doesn't strike out a ton. Uh, so I like him also. <laughs> Uh, and I'm with you. I, I think some two to three mans of Cleveland is where we want to land today, uh, but nothing more than that. I don't want to. I don't want to load up here. I think, like I said, these uh, there's some other teams on this slate that we've already talked about that I love. Uh, so I don't, you know, not a primary stake, but definitely a se- definitely a secondary. Yeah, for sure. Uh, any interest here in the Oakland bats? Not really. Um, once again, I'm not thrilled about about uh, Logan Allen, Stevie. Like I, I think he could give up some runs here, but I'm not thrilled about Oakland. Um, you know, may, maybe I play some Seth Brown. Like I, I don't hate Seth Brown, but I think I think I get a, a couple one off pieces from this team. Like last guys in, if I'm building a mega stack, Stevie, and I'm I'm left with some salary. Like maybe I plug in a Nick Allen at twenty nine hundred at shortstop just because, but I'm not I'm not primarily stacking this team. I like Roker. Um, shocker to anybody that listened to the podcast last year. I like Roker, and I like Ruiz. Ruiz is a guy that brings some upside with his power, and he's a guy that brings some upside with his speed. He stole sixty seven bases last year. I, I feel like. Ruiz is always a guy that is going to run if he gets on base. So I, I like Ruiz and I like Roker. Not full stacks, but definitely guys that I'll use in one-off or two-man situations that I feel okay about in this spot. We uh, finish it out. St. Louis Adelaide taking on the Dodgers. Nine total. Dodgers a 225 favorite. We got Zach Thompson going up against Bobby Miller. Cardinals are just in shambles, man. This starting rotation is is not what they wanted to start the season with. Um, yeah, and I know this starting rotation from spring training, Stevie. It is rough. They don't have any real aces. Yep. Um, Thompson, I, I'm not playing him. Do you have any interest here? No. no. Yeah. And I will say I watched a lot of Dodgers game. Miles Mikolas, for what it's worth, um, he, he still is <laughs> not good. <laughs> not good. Dude, if you didn't hear me, not Nicholas good. Nicholas yeah. Thompson, Gibson, um, they had a Libra Torre starting for spring training. Like when I was, I said, "Oh man, this this team, Stevie." I was already planning to target this starting lineup every mm. day. No matter who it is, it's rough. Trust me, this is this is a rough pitching rotation. They're, they're down in the doldrums right now. Yeah, we got a lot of Cardinals fans that hang out in chat, and uh, I'm sorry, Cardinals fans. <laughs> I'm a Red Sox fan. I feel you. We're we're not good this year either. Um, any interest here in Bobby Miller on the other side of this game? Man, I just I think he's a little bit too expensive, Stevie. But I mean, we could afford him on this slate. I yeah. just don't like him. 
That, that's that's what it is. But I think I end up there just because I can. Yeah, I mean, I think he's okay. We kind of yeah. saw Glass now pitch good, but like the Cardinals lineup might not strike out a ton this year. They got a lot of contact guys. Um, we saw that with Glass now on Thursday. Mm-hmm. It my my problem is we got to play two pitchers on DraftKings, and I, I like Kelly. And then it's just like, who else do I play? Um, so that's where I'm struggling and why I, I think I could potentially play a little bit of Miller here. But, I mean, it, this is where it gets tough. One of the reasons that I don't mind, like, Pavetta is because at least he has some strikeout upside. He might give up a home run or two, but, like, I might still get my strikeouts. Um, weird slate. Like, second second games of the year and, like, we have this bad of pitching. It's, yeah. We're, it's going to be the year of the bat, man. There's going to be a lot of hitting this year. Yeah, for sure. Until, until some of these teams have, like, a day off in between and we can get them staggered. Because, like, you got to also think, Steve, out of the canceled games, we had Zach Wheeler and we had Spencer Strider, who are now going to be off. So we're probably going to get them on one of these weird days now, which will help us. Um, but, yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm with you. R- rough, rough, rough times for, for pitchers today. All right, let's talk um, Cardinals bats. Miller, I mean, Miller is okay. He's not a bad pitcher by any means. Um, any interest here in the Cardinals bats? Uh, not not generally speaking. I mean, I don't mind one-off Stevie, but I'm not stacking the Cardinals. But I just, once again, this is a purely a one-off team for me. Like, if, I, if I'm done and I end up on Paul Goldschmidt, fine. If I end up on Arenado, fine. You know, if I end up on, you know, Crawford fine or win, whatever, but I just, I'm not stacking this team. Yeah. I mean, so Miller didn't pitch um, in that overseas series. He had 80 pitches in his last, um, you know, outing. I think that like he throws, if he's pitching well, he could throw like 85 plus pitches here. And like, for me on the Cardinals bats, it's just like, I think Gorman's okay. Um, Donovan's okay. I'm not stacking this team, but I could see using a little bit of these guys. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I mean, I don't know. Um, I'm struggling overall on this slate with like pitching. And I, I mean, I feel like I'm going to end up on some Miller, so I probably won't play a ton of St. Louis. But yeah, I mean, we should at least mention if Victor, start, if Victor Scott starts again for the Cardinals, he's 2K on DraftKings. The dude is a steal, stolen base machine. Um, if he gets on, he's going to run here. So um, you could definitely use him as a, like a punt type of play. And Derek just said in chat too, um, very, very fast guy. 2.0. Yep. You remember uh, Billy Don- Hamilton when he was at Kansas? No, not Kansas oh. City. He was, when he was at Cincinnati. Yeah, the Reds. If you walked him or he bunted, you might as well just hand him an extra base. Like he's gone. Yep. Um. All right, let's go to – the Dodgers bats here. I mean, they're, they're a top end stack today. Like uh, this is not an overthink it spot. The Dodgers are going to stay hot. Uh, they got another really good matchup here. Don't be afraid to play lefty lefty matchups here against Zach Thompson. Yeah, absolutely. Love the Dodgers TV. And I don't think, I don't feel like we have to sell you on the Dodgers. We're early in the season, but they're getting one of the worst pitching staffs for a true series. Stevie to open it up outside of their mini one and CO. I, so I, I mean, sign me up here. Any of the any any of these pieces, Stevie. I had tons of exposure to Gavin Lux today. I had tons of exposure to Outman today or on the previous slate. I had tons of exposure to Hayward. I'm going to have exposure to this team again, top in and bottom in. Uh, this just a really good lineup and uh, and a really good spot for them. All right, let's play the morning grind game, and then uh, we'll get out of here. We get started with under 8,000 to get six or more strikeouts today. Who do you got? You already know who I'm going with, Steve. Mr. Puck, uh, definitely got to go with him today, one of my favorites. Yeah, I mean, I think that he's solid. I don't think there's a lot of options um, in this range today, for what it's worth. Um I mean, I don't want to say anybody's name. If I had to pick somebody, I'd probably pick. <laughs> I don't know. 
Um, I, I didn't write this question down before the show. That's my bad. I would have done the same thing. Maybe Logan Allen. If he gets a good Oakland lineup, maybe Logan Allen. Um, but yeah, the pitching on the slate stinks. Over 8K to score under 15. Who is your bust today? Easy, man. Joe Musgrove. bro. He's getting targeted. I don't see it. Yeah, I don't mind that one at all. Um, I'm going to go Chris Bassett against Tampa. Or not Chris Bassett. Um, I wanted to use Chris Bassett for my strikeout answer. Um, but give me give me Christian Javier against the Yankees here. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Christian Javier in the spot. Over 4K to hit a home run. Who's going yard today? Uh, give me Alex Bregman from the Houston Astros. All right. I'm going to go Juan Soto. Um, ground ball hitter, fly ball pitcher. You know how this works for us. Um, I like Juan Soto quite a bit on this slate. Under 4K to get two hits. Who's a cheap bet that you like to get two hits today? Going with Michael Brantley. Sorry, I just did that, Stevie. We know Brantley isn't playing. He was up in – he did the first pitch today. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah. And then he was I, up in the booth and, yeah. Yeah, so I just threw that out just for old time's sake. Looks like he's uh, he's done. He's out of there. No big deal. Um, Stevie, you, you know, I just don't like Joe Musgrove, man. Give me Matt Chapman at 3,900. Yeah, don't hate it. Um, I'm gonna go. Oh, is he cheap enough? Uh, give me Jock Peterson here at 3,900. I like him more for home runs, but a home run equals two hits. We'll take two home runs. He could do that for us. Uh, stack to score six or more runs today. Who do you got? Not gonna go with the obvious LA Dodgers, Stevie. I'm going to go with probably the second most obvious with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Yeah, I like Arizona a lot today. We talked about that spot. Um, I think that they're a top stack today. Yeah, um, I had Arizona written down as well. I'll go... Gosh, I I think I have to go back to Houston here. I I really like the Astros today. So give me Houston to score eight or more runs, or six or more runs. Uh, let's go to the betting portion of the show. Give me a player prop or pick em play that you like on the slate. Yeah, I was looking. I didn't see anything uh, readily available on, on the prop sites, at least not on prize pick, Stevie. In my head, I think I know where this is going to land. Now, I could be wrong. I, I reserve the right to be wrong here. Uh, I think Merrill Kelly comes out at five and a half or six and a half. Um, if it's Five and a half, I'm for sure going over. Six and a half, maybe I stay away. Um, and I, But I want to give a bonus because I'm not sure where he's going to end up. A.J. Puck, Stevie, I think he comes out at five and a half. I want the over. Give me the over on Puck. Anything five and a half and below, I want the over. I don't think he comes out at six and a half. He came out at five and a half on um, Sportsbooks. So at plus yes. money. So you get you get oh, plus yeah. one four right now on him so there you go i am gonna go to my boy my man my dude cal quantrell under three and a half strikeouts Uh, again just not missing a lot of bats um i can't wait to see if we get stripling at like four and a half strikeouts in this spot it's not up yet um so I hope we can take advantage of Ross Stripling's strikeout prop and his out prop. Anything Ross Stripling today, yeah. I'm in. Uh, is there any other bets that you like on this slate? Uh, let's see. Let's see here. Sorry, Stevie. We, we got this thing rolled out there. Yeah, give me... As crazy as this sounds, give me the Blue Jays at plus 110. You can get that on FanDuel right now. I don't like Bassett, but I hate Savali more. Yeah, I don't mind that. I I could see Toronto winning that game um, for sure. I'm going to – so I bet this like 15 minutes ago, and it's already moved on the hard rock, but I was looking on other books, and you can still get this line. So um, it's going to move. It's already moving. Uh, Give me Cleveland over three and a half runs today. Um, again, I already took this. It's on, on the hard rock now. It's four and a half. But um, 
I'm finding it on other books at three and a half still. So if you can find Cleveland over three and a half runs, I really like this line today. I think Cleveland is in a great spot against Stripling. And uh, again, I'm going to be attacking Ross Stripling's props just in general on this slate. So I like Cleveland to score some runs in this game. Will, any final thoughts on this one? Negative, my brother. Glad to come on and do this show with you. And uh, let's let's continue to help these fine people make some money. Yeah, back on <laughs> Monday for April Fool's edition of the Morning Grind, which means absolutely nothing. We're just going to talk baseball, hang out with you in YouTube, and have a good time. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button over there on the Rotor Grinders Morning Grind YouTube page. Come hang out with us live. We have a lot of fun chats going over there and having um, a ball and talking about everything and anything. So uh, come hang out with us live almost 10 o'clock on any given night on Eastern time. So hope everyone has a fantastic Easter Sunday. Back Monday, talking baseball. Good luck, everyone. We'll see you then.